Good morning, brothers and sisters. I want to welcome you to worship this morning on the 10th of July. It's a good day to be here. 
The watchword for the week comes to us from Psalm 25, verse 4, and it reads, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Can we stand for the call to worship, please? To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth my trans or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Or him at this time is hymn number 751, God of grace and God of glory. in the liturgy for penitence and prayer all remain standing hear my cry O God attend unto my prayer from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that is higher than I for thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from my enemies hear the word of the Lord I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way I should go. Oh, that you had hearkened to my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. 
stand by the roads and look and ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it and you shall find rest for your souls. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. He will declare our iniquity. He will repent of our sins. Thus saith the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. Return ye backsliding children, acknowledge your iniquity, that you have transgressed against the Lord your God, and I will not keep mine anger forever. Acknowledge our transgression, and our sin is ever before us. Against thee, the only, have we sinned, and done that which is evil in thy sight. If thou shouldst mark iniquity, O Lord, who could stand? Enter not into judgment with thy servants, for no man living is righteous before thee. We do not offer our supplications before thee, relying on our own goodness, but on thy great compassion. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Hide thy face from our sins and blot out all our iniquities. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Restore unto us the joy of thy salvation, and uphold us with thy free spirit. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. Our love is not sacrificed, as we would give it. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Drawing near, in full assurance of faith, let us confess our sins and present our supplication before the Lord our God. Let us pray. Together. Most holy and almighty God, our Savior, we acknowledge our transgressions. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly. The good that we knew to do we have not done, and in all our works we have been unprofitable servants and have come short of thy glory. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name, and deliver us and purge away our sins, for thy name's sake. Amen. Thus saith the Lord, I, even I, I am mean, he who blotted out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Go and sin no more. Awesome. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you for the kingdom. The gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try those who dwell upon the earth. Hold fast what thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Amen. 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 At this time in the service, we have another hymn, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. <clears throat>
Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father and God, we approach your throne of grace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving and praise. For you are truly a great God, a God who loves with an everlasting love, a God who gives peace to the restless heart. We give you praise, honor, and glory this morning, O oh God, because you are truly worthy of our praise. We pray this morning in the name of Jesus that you will give us the grace to walk, O oh God, in forgiveness, that you will give us power to free us and to open us to be a loving and caring people. We thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus for giving us the authority and the power against the power of the enemy. And we know with your power, O oh God, we can come to you in the name of Jesus. We can come to you with a yielded heart that says, Lord, change me. Lord, we come to be transformed. We come to be healed. We come to be empowered. And so this morning, Lord, I lift up the names of those in our bulletin to your throne of grace. We are asking of you, O oh God, to be merciful. The Reverend Dr. Frank Barker and Sister Glory Barker. The Reverend Dr. Cartwright Jarvis and the Sister Perlene Jarvis. Brother Ralph Brown. Brother Charles Robinson and Sister Laurel Robinson. Sister Heather Newman and family, Brother Dale Francis, Sister Perla Thomas, Tiffany McDaniel, Clarence Harris, Tony Thompson, Andrew Ferguson, Hyacinth Brown, Wilton Moore, Lena Richards, Shashan Thomas, the Reverend Dr. Dean Christopher and family, and the passing of his aunt, Gerlet Solomon, and that is in Antigua, the family of Sandro. Heavenly Father and God, we bring them to your throne of grace in a very mighty way this morning, for you are the God who heals, the God who transforms, the God who knows all things and sees all things. And so we lift them up to you this morning along with their entire congregation. We are asking for mercy. We are asking for that love, that eternal love, that that love will pass through our lives, O oh God, and that we would live in accordance and according to that love. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, we recognize that life is too short. And so now, Lord, help us in the name of Jesus to recognize that life is also precious. So let us not waste our time on things that are not important but to seek those things that you have called us to do, the places that you have asked us to go. Oh, Heavenly Father and God, we have no one but you. You are our only God. You are the only one who knows all things, sees all things, and hears all things. And so bless us now in a very special way. We bring ourselves here this, today, this morning, oh God, to be a witness for you. It is for you, O oh God, and only you that we come. We come to sing songs of praise and thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. 
And so, O oh, Heavenly Father, whatever our issues, we ask us in the name of Jesus that you would restore us to good health. This we pray and we ask it all in Jesus' wonderful and mighty name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. <clears throat> Good morning, brothers and sisters, and after such a heartfelt prayer, we will be singing the song, as everybody knows, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And the God that we serve says if we seek him first, if we put him first, then everything that is necessary will be added unto us. The way may be rough, but he promises never to forsake us because he is with us every step of the road. See, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Sing the first verse again and then go into the chorus, please. Sing ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. slowly now the second verse ask and it shall be given unto you see that ye shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you Alleluia. okay the chorus quietly now Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It is good to see all your beautiful faces this morning. We bless the Lord for life. Amen. God is good. And all the time, we bless his name. Let us stand as we continue just to worship God. Worship God for his goodness. Our first song, Sons of God Arise. Sons of God arise, sons of God arise, from the ends of the earth arise, fire in your hands, fire in your mouth, fire in your feet, one more time, sons of God arise, sons of God
to warm up this morning huh? we needed more fire it's what the fifth Sunday after Pentecost yeah and we we like we lost our fire when I think about the mercies of the Lord I have a right to sing and shout when I think about the mercies of the Lord And shout his praises more. Oh, when I think about the mercies of the Lord, I have a right to sing and shout his praises more. Let's go, my son, my son, burden lifting. Lifting, burdens lifting, my son, burdens lifting, lifting. When I think about, when I think about the mercies of the Lord, yes, I have a right to sing and shout His praises more. When I think about, oh, when I think about the mercies of the Lord, yes, I have a right to sing and shout His praises more. My son, my son, my son, burdens lifting, lifting. Lifting, lifting, burn my son, my son, burdens lifting, lifting, burdens lifting, my son, my son, burdens lifting, lifting, burdens lifting. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thanks, Sister Tracy. At this time in the service, in the name of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we extend a very warm welcome to all sharing this service. I'm so happy to see so many people here today. A round of applause for everybody who's here today. Amen, amen. A very warm welcome to all sharing this worship experience on this fifth Sunday after Pentecost. A special welcome is extended to all visitors and those who have joined us online today. And we'll expand some more on that afterwards. At this point, we'll have the scripture readings um, by Sister Dion Salesman. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The parable of the Good Samaritan. An expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, 
you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to vindicate himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and took off, leaving him half dead. No, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But the Samaritan, while traveling, came upon him, and when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, treating them with oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The words of the Lord. Thank you, Sister Dian. And may we also do as the scripture suggests, Go and do likewise because our neighbor is not a geographical, is not bound by geography. Amen. At this point in the service, we'll have our, our tithes and offerings. And shortly after that, we'll have a presentation. Our offertory sentence. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. This is from Deuteronomy 30 and verse 9. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. And at this point in time, we're doing, I'm sorry, I forgot. We're doing a special offering for the Agape Ministry in uh, Miami. The minister, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, who cheers, who spearheads that ministry. She does it out of her pocket. So, Yove? Gonzalez. Okay. So after we've um, we have taken up our tithes and offerings, we'll be having a special collection on behalf of our uh, Reverend Gonzalez. What? Yeah, I know. Uh, when we finish with this, yes. Sister, I see. I'll stand for me, please. So this is a special, okay. All right. We give thee but thine own, whatever gifts may be, all that we have is thine alone, I trust, O oh Lord, from thee. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you that Jesus gave up his life for us. In thanksgiving for this wonderful gift, 
we bring you these gifts, offerings, and tithes, and with them we bring ourselves. Take us and use us so that, so that our lives may re reflect the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And at this point in the service, thank you. At this point in the service, we're going to remember of uh, one of our members who passed on, um, Brother Denfield Spencer. We're going to be singing the hymn, uh, Is Your All on the Altar Sacrifice Made? And Sister Modesty Spencer, his dear wife, is going to sing the first verse, and then the rest of us continue with the chorus and the other verses. I'd like to invite Sister Modestine. Come on up. I stand right next to you, Sister Modestine. Just like we did seven years ago when the women were there with you, I'll stand right next to you. Come on up. Come on up, Sister Modestine. Welcome to all the family members who are here to join in the celebration. sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly fervently prayed but you cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid Of the fellowships 
sweet. We shall share at His feet when our all on the altar is laid. It's all on the altar of sacrifice laid. Your heart does the Spirit control. You can go. As you yield in your body and soul. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father and God, we lift up the Spencer family to your throne of grace this morning in a very special and mighty way. Amen. We want to thank you today, O oh God, for the life that you gave him while on this earth. We recognize, O oh God, that everything is done in your own timing, and you have decided to take him home to be with you. And so, Lord God, I ask and pray in the name of Jesus that you would reach out and touch the family right now. That you would send the spirit of comfort upon them, O oh God, recognizing that the husband is no longer present, where they can, whom they can touch, feel, share, laugh. But you are God, and you are able to fill that void in their lives, O oh God. And so Lord God, in a very special and mighty way, Allow your spirit to come down upon them this morning, O oh God, enabling them to be strong in the Lord Amen. and in the power of his might. Amen. And you, O oh God, will receive all praise, Amen. honor, and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Service continues with the hymn. O oh, for a heart to praise my God. And they'd be followed by the message brought to us by Reverend Bedford.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This morning, our message is taken from 2 Chronicles 7, 14 and 15. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their lands. Verse 15, my eyes will be open unto their ears. Attend my, no, I'm sorry. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made. My brothers and sisters, in this passage of scripture, God puts a plan in place to bless the people of Israel. From time to time, his plans to bless is twofold, conditional and unconditional. We see here from this passage of scripture that his promise to bless them is conditional. It's conditional, it's dependent on someone or something to say or do. Unconditional. It means that it's unquestioning. No questioning. It's unrestricted. And most importantly, it is certain. This promise in 2 Chronicles 14 is conditional. If my people would humble themselves, pray, and turn, then God will respond. It's an amazing thing. He would, he first, he says, I will hear, I will forgive, and I will restore. But only if you humble yourself, only if you pray, and prayer it means if you repent, if you seek, and if you turn. Oh, my friends, it's an important passage. God is not asleep. He is omnipotent, all-powerful, supreme, unconquerable. He is also omniscient, all-knowing, all-wise, all-seeing. He never sleeps. He's omnipresent, always present. God is everywhere. So whatever we need, whatever help we require, God is always present. There, are, there may be people in this world who we would say are puffed up, high-minded, proud. In Mark 7, 22, Jesus connects pride with other acts as evil. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing.
And he, he says that this evil comes from the heart and it defiles the person. If what comes out of the heart defiles a person, it means then that we must constantly test our teaching, constantly test our behavior and test it by the word of God. In doing so, we must reject what is of men. Hold on to what comes from God. So our question should be, what does the word of God say? What does it say? Jesus is saying it is not a matter of the food that you eat. The food you eat without ritual cleansing that defiles a person. It is not the eating of a particular kind of food that defiles a person. What defiles a person, the Bible tells us, the words of Jesus himself, is the state of a person's heart. So this morning, we can hear the words, follow me. If Christ extends his invitation to come, to become his disciples, we in turn ask him to forgive and to remove that spirit of pride from us. With God, all things are possible. You see, true love for souls, true love for souls is breathe all things. It endures all things. True love for souls. And so, God wants us to humble ourselves. And we must do our utmost to follow that plan that God has prepared for us. Humble ourselves. The second that God wants us to do, the second thing is to pray. My friends, pray. Prayer is communicating with God. It is talking to God. You know, there are some people say, I can't pray. I don't like to pray. They love God, but they don't like to pray. They don't, they don't know how to pray. Well, for me, prayer is just us talking to each other. I came in and you asked me a question, I answer. And there might be a dialogue. And that's what prayer is all about. So you approach God in that same level. And with this understanding that God knows everything you're about to ask him or say to him, even before you open your mouth. So God wants us to pray. And in that in saying so, he wants us to come to him in repentance. 
For instance, if we are not humble, if we have that spirit of pride, we must come to God in prayer, asking him for forgiveness and to remove that spirit of prayer from us. We must always talk to God because God wants to speak to us and he speaks to us through his word, the Holy Scripture. In other words, what I am saying this morning is that when we read or study the word of God, God is speaking to us. And that is why it is important that whatever we get from the scripture, we must begin to apply to our daily life. Because that's what Bible study is all about. Whether you're going to a Bible study group or you're doing your own Bible study at home, it calls for us to, um, to interpret scripture. What is it saying to me? But the most important part, um, they have observationals. I think observation is the first one. What am I looking at? What am I seeing? But the most important part of studying the word of God is application. Amen. You must apply what God is giving you to your daily life. And that is why God is saying to pray. He would open up your understanding. There are people preaching for 60, 50 years, and they do not understand the entire scripture or the Bible. But anything you are concerned about, and you do not understand, and you lift it up in prayer to God, he is going to make it known to you somehow. Somehow he will make it known to you. Because God wants us, wants us to know about him. He wants us to follow his teaching. So we must now use all, our, all the opportunities given to us to dialogue with God. With heart and soul. And this could involve not only our conversation, but to know the will of God for our lives. God wants us to know about his will. We can bring our cries for help to God. According to Exodus 3 and 7, Judges 9 and 6. Confession of sin. Known or unknown. Sins in your community. Always remember to pray for your community. Request for wisdom. Praise. Don't forget praise. Sometimes you want to pray. And somehow the words are not coming up. And some people get up, will give up and say, I'm going to pray later. But if you begin to sing choruses, songs of praise and lifting up God, man, and you get back into prayer, you don't know when to stop. Amen. Oh yes, you don't know when to stop. So don't forget to praise God when you go into prayer, praise God. If you need a miracle, praise God for it. Praise him for it even before you received it. Protection, healing, pardon. God wants us to pray. Then the third thing he says to seek. And my friends, we must always seek God's presence. But it is by faith. That we would acknowledge we are in the presence of God. And when we are in the presence of God by faith, we enjoy his company. We enjoy his company. So we must use our, the opportunity to enjoy God's presence at all times. 
A mountain could be in our lives, but we pray. Nothing happened. We give up. Oh, my friends, why do we give up? It is the easiest thing to do. Just give up. Because giving up, you mean you're not going to do anything. You're not going to say anything. It's the easiest thing to do. But I've always asked the question, why give up? One guy shared with me, I think I, after about two, three months after I got saved, and I shared it with a friend of mine, a French descent. And he said to me, you know, I was saved once. I said, really? He said, yeah. I was saved once. And you know what happened? My father-in-law got sick. And I prayed, I prayed, I said, Bedford, I prayed to God. The man dead. <laughs> the man dead. I don't want to hear nothing about God again. And I could not open my mouth to help that person in wanting because I didn't know what to say. I was shocked and I did not know what to say. About two or three months after I got saved, I did not know. And so we can see how people um, turn away from God and missed out on God's blessing. The thing about it is that God never turned away from us. God never turned away from us. Whatever is in our life, whatever the concerns, God is always present. Jesus encourages us, be persistent in your prayers to God. Seek and keep on seeking and you will find. And so we must be persistent in our prayer as we turn to God. Do not give up. I know sometimes we have emergencies and when we turn to God, we want things to happen right away. But God acts in his own time. And we cannot force his hand. We cannot bribe him. No, we cannot bribe him. But it's a beautiful thing when we can wait on God. When we can wait on God. But Jesus says, be persistent in your prayer. And I am going to follow his words. I am going to follow the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I would always continue to seek my spiritual blessings again and again from God. I would never conclude that God cannot be found. So in your efforts to seek God, I ask you not to give up, my brothers and sisters. And if you are not going to give up, I'm telling you now that it takes faith, faith to wait on God. Faith to wait on God for his great and precious promises. So I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. And with those words, I have nothing to worry about. Wherever I go throughout the world, I know that God is always present. I know that God is always concerned about our welfare. I know that God has the power to sustain us in every situation and circumstances. I know that God is able. We must be direct. Ask God for what you need. And walk away with the blessings you have asked for and maybe more. Solomon asks for one thing and God said, I will give you more than that. And sometimes things begin to unfold in our lives. We are waiting on God. We have a problem and we are complaining about it. 
and somehow we begin to look around and the problem is gone, is no place to be found because God has acted on our behalf. And the next, the fourth thing is to turn. God wants us to turn. Turn. Sometimes we walk around with this feeling of regret. Whatever is said, whatever we had done, we just carry it around and around and around with regret. Well, whatever it may be this morning, it is called a change of mind. A change of mind. This is actually what turning is all about. <clears throat> we no longer want to live in sin. We, don't, we no longer want to live to sin. So we turn from sin <clears throat> with a feeling <clears throat> of regret and to turn to God. We must not allow anyone to stand in a way in turning to our God. We must go back to God whatever we have done whatever we have said if we do not want to be on that part anymore if we do not want to take those steps anymore we must turn back turn back to god repent Because you have changed your mind. That is what God is asking us to do this morning. To turn back to him. God is waiting with his arm outstretched. Waiting on us to turn back. I remember so much that day. When I turned back to God. It was really a solemn moment in that memorial Moravian church in St. Thomas the Virgin Islands. We had that pastor from Nicaragua and he preached and he preached for us one week, evangelistic services. And he kept on saying, I am not preaching. I am not preaching. Uh, something is wrong. Something is wrong. But all the time, Every word came out from his mouth was going here. And when he gave that altar call, I can remember those voices saying, you don't have to go now. You can do it tomorrow. And I testify to people, I don't know how I got up and went to the altar, but I was there. I was there with tears and asking God to forgive me all my sins of my shortcomings. And I made a promise that I would serve him. That was a blessed day for me. But there was a spiritual warfare. The pastor did not understand what was happening. And I think the enemy was fighting to keep me for himself. You know, we had a pastor, St. Croix, Pastor Jacob, and we had a synod, and I went to him. He was assigned to preach at a, a church. I was not yet a pastor. And I went with him to support him. And he said, you know, I used to play in a steel pan, in a steel band, and the name of it was Hellgate. <laughs> And he said, I want you all to know that as far as I got <laughs> at the gate. <laughs> that, <laughs> it's an amazing thing. And so how many of us today has reached that far? With all the encouragement from others, maybe our pastors, parents, maybe not parents, 
Sometimes children get saved before the parents, but anyhow, parents or whoever, and we ignore it all. And we got that, we only to take that other step. Pastor Jacob said, that's as far as I got. <laughs> I did not go in. <laughs> and he had no intention of going there. <laughs> but God will be there for us. We must seek God. Seek his face. Pray. Turn back to him. He will listen to our prayers. From his home in heaven. He will do what is best for you. He will do what is best for me. He will be on the lookout for you, my friends. He will be attentive to your prayer. He will forgive your sins. I say this morning, God loves you with an everlasting love. He will be focused and what is taking place in your life. We must only surrender to God as we go through this life. We must not allow any negative spiritual forces that can use controlling influence in our lives to diminish our capacity to be a free, open, and loving people. Because when that happens, that's where pride comes in. Take away our ability to love, to love others. Come down from that pinnacle. Come down from that high mountain and be what God wants us to be, to love others. To always place others above ourselves. God is loving and caring. He wants us to be humble. We must ask others to receive the salvation God offers and assure them that we have the same Heavenly Father. It's not that we have one father in heaven and they have another. We all belong to God. We just need to come to him in prayer. Come down from the height. Look at others with understanding, with love, with patience, and with hope. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is it is within me. Bless his holy name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Reverend Bedford for that inspiring message. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of response is Faith is the Victory.
reflection as we prepare for the Holy Communion while we're waiting to get started on that section of the service we're going to sing a, a famous chorus we are one in the spirit and take a take a minute to look at the words we are one in the spirit we are one in the Lord we are one in the spirit we are one in the Lord and we pray that all unity may one day be restored and they'll know that we are Christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we're christians by our love with all of what's going on in the world today we need to look at these words and reflect on them and be guided okay we'll sing <coughs> spirit we are one in the lord we are one in the spirit we are one Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
loving God, you are holy indeed. We thank you for counting us worthy to appear before you. By the power of your Holy Spirit and life-giving spirit, and according to your holy will, we ask you to bless and sanctify this gift of bread and wine, which we bring before you. May they be to us the communion of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we and the whole church, as we receive this communion by faith, be partakers of your body and blood to our spiritual nourishment and growth in grace. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into your kingdom all who share this holy communion so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take, eat. This in remembrance of Christ's body was broken for you and feed upon him in your hearts with thanksgiving. divine presence, by the holy sacraments, with all the merits of thy life, suffering, death, and resurrection. Bless and comfort us, gracious Lord and God. Amen. In the same way, after supper, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful.
Christ the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us our peace. Amen. Whenever you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. Until he comes. <laughs> Till he you that to continue to pray and remember to pray and don't leave me out pray Amen. for me Amen. Amen. Amen all right so God be with you all as we go through this another week receive the benediction the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Safe drive for. Good morning again to everyone here and anybody who is within the, the reach of my voice, whether by YouTube or Zoom. A hearty Margaret welcome. I want to say it's nice to see some familiar faces for the first in a long time, but I also want to say anybody who's worshiping with us for the first time, would you like to stand up, introduce yourself and let us know who invited you? If you don't want to, that's okay. If you want to just wave your hand, that's okay too. It's all up to you. Anybody here for the first time? No? Okay, great. Well, welcome back to anybody we haven't seen. I see Ms. Jaheen. I saw him. He went, oh my. Okay, we have a long history. But I want to welcome Sister Spencer and her family. As you know, um, I didn't realize it's been seven years since we lost our dear brother Spencer. And I can tell you, when you look at those uh, the pictures from when we look at the men's fellowship, I remember when Jaheem was this high, he went to <laughs> sing on the, seriously, when he was this high about, and went to sing on the choir with Re Brother Spencer, you know, it's, it's, we go way back. And in her time, at the end, we um, all rallied around Sister Spencer. It was a real close time for the church at that time. Sad, but close. Amen? Amen. Okay, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Now to our announcements for today. Do we have anybody celebrating? We're looking to celebrate today. We have um, Lamoya. No, oh, so nobody this week. Okay. And everybody remembers our dear Reverend Nicholas. I think he's in town right now, yes? 
Um, he's going to celebrate 40 years in the ministry. The service of celebration will be held on August 7th at the Green Memorabian Church. Um, I'm not sure if it will be live streamed or uh, via Zoom, but once it is, they will let us know and then you'll be, ha you'll be welcome to join from a distance. Praise the Lord for his years of service. We don't have any anybody this week. So we won't sing the hymn. Yes? Okay, so the concerns for the congregation. We're still asking everybody to wear their masks because believe it or not, COVID has not left us. Um, people are still catching the, catching the COVID. They're just not getting as sick as they used to vaccinate it or not. They haven't even been reporting any deaths. So praise the Lord, I hope that's a good sign. But continue to practice your social distancing, continue to wash your hands and use the hand sanitizers, amen? amen. Bible study continues. Wednesday, July 13th at 7 p.m. The link is there and the password is there. And it's a really, really good time um, where the congregations get together via Zoom with the leadership and the teaching of the pastors or, 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 or pastors. We also still have our Margaret Moravian, um, Margaret Moravian gives a five minutes inspiration on WAVS. Reverend Bedford is the one who does it at 6.40 on Sunday mornings. And this week, should, our young people should have gone to summer camp. As a matter of fact, they should have left last night. But um, as I said, COVID is still alive. They, we had to cancel it because some of the counselors came down with COVID. So, so far, the one that starts next Sunday is still scheduled. So we're going to pray as a congregation that the, the young people can still go off to camp um, starting next Sunday. Amen. Um, we still encourage you where you can give your given. You can also, you can give on the portal. You can give in person. You can send it to brother Jeff. His address is there. The numbers for anybody who would like to, um, who you would like to pass by and collect it is listed in the bulletin. Okay. And we're still celebrating, um, with John Huss. Yes. He was, he was a burner on the 6th of July. Seek the truth, listen to the truth, teach the truth, love the truth, abide by the truth, and defend the truth unto death. Those were his words. I would, uh, do we have any more announcements? No? Oh, and I have one as well. Next week, our guest preacher will be an old friend, Reverend Norman Theron, from the Seventh-day Baptist Church, who we shared um, with uh, the Riverside. Okay. And just before that, I'd like to say um, the Women's Fellowship will be meeting via Zoom um, on next Saturday, the 16th at 10 o'clock. Uh, the invitation went out, and Sister Susie will send us some more information closer, closer to the time. So please, please. It's not going to be a long meeting, but we try our best to get a time that will be um, acceptable to everybody. So 10 a.m. next week, Sunday, Saturday, sorry, the 16th of July. Yeah, I get it afterwards. If there are no other announcements. Other announcements. Um, si yes, yes. Sister Spencer has brought has provided some refreshments. As you know, we're remembering our dear departed um, brother Spencer this morning. So could we all stand and say our oh, grace, be grace, please? <laughs>
So let us take the words we receive with us and everybody have a blessed week. Amen.